I'm not critical of the six party talks as a framework. I'm critical of how we, the United States, South Korea, others have operated in that context. I think it's the right framework, as I said, but it's only a framework. Our problem is we have treated negotiations as a strategy. Well, uh, Mr. Ambassador, what's your strategy for dealing with North Korea? The six party talks. What's that about? The six party talks are not a strategy, they're a form. What you need is a strategy that utilizes that form. And part of that strategy is pressure, part of it is negotiating uh, positions with, uh, you know, uh, you know with, uh, with, with the Chinese, with, with our friends and allies, with our, with our other partners in, uh, in the context of six party talks and, and well beyond that. Uh, we just haven't learned, I think, from our successes and, and, and our losses. Uh, our failures. I, I think we need to apply uh, the lessons uh, in the context of the six-party talks. Uh, I don't think we, I don't think we should go back to the six-party talks until we've changed the fundamental calculation of North Korea. I don't find any value in talking for the sake of talking. There's just, there's just no value there. In fact, it's costly because it, it does instill this sense of complacency. I think it does. Uh, it, it, it. It fills this vacuum. Well, you're doing something. You're talking. You're negotiating. You're coming up with an agreed statement, which, by the way, North Korea would never has any intention of fulfilling. Uh, it's, you know, you know, it's it's changing the calculation of North Korea that's vital. It's not the format. It's not the process. Those can be important, uh, and you certainly want to do it smarter in terms of the process and format. Uh, but it's changing the calculation. North Korea needs to move from a position of thinking about nuclear weapons as an important part of the survival of their regime, and I think they clearly think that, not just to deter the United States, but for a whole lot of reasons, okay? In no small part because <coughs> nuclear weapons seems to be the goose that lays the golden egg and lays the golden egg and lays the golden egg. They just keep getting paid for it. Uh, but we need to change the calculation from this is important to our survival to these weapons undermine our survival. That's what we did with the Libyans. Uh, we, need to get, we need to get there with, uh, with uh, the North Koreans. Uh, and that plays to, I think, that whole question of motivations. Undoubtedly, they look at Libya and they say, why did those guys do such a stupid thing about giving up their nuclear weapons? Because if they had nuclear weapons, would the U.S. intervene? Would NATO intervene? Uh, I bet in terms of sort of how North Korea approaches this, they'd probably say, no, they wouldn't do that. You know, nuclear weapons provides this sense of protection. I have, I have no doubt that that's the case. But you know, the Libyans thought that same way too. Until we changed their calculation. And it became very clear to them, much clearer than it was to any of us on the other side of the table, but very clear to them that if they didn't give up their nuclear weapons, they would be their, their weapons program. They didn't have a nuclear weapon yet. Uh, they, you know, they uh, they would risk the survival of the regime. There's no question about it. Now, is there a sort of a magic formula for for coming up with that? I I, I don't have it. It's going to take patience. It's going to take the perception of resolve. It's going to take the development of capabilities, including new capabilities. If this were easy, we would have solved the problem 20 years ago. Okay, this, this is not easy. Okay, this, this, this is hard. Uh, even though I would argue that North Korea is a lot easier than Iran, because I spent a lot of time working the Iran problem, which I think is even more complex and even more dangerous than North Korea. Uh, but this is, this, is, this is a set of hard policy decisions. No easy decisions. There's going to be consequences for us. There are going to be costs for us. Uh, in terms of Libya, again, good, good question. Uh, you know, what are the North Koreans thinking are the right lessons? Well, we mentioned one in that nukes are really helpful and you know, the idiot Libyans gave up their nuclear weapons. Uh, and we would never do the same. But that's, that's a simplistic reading of, of uh, what Libya did and why Libya did what it did. Uh, so, so what lessons? Uh, well, again, you know, it reinforces this notion that they, that they need uh, nuclear uh, weapons. Uh, but you know, if I'm, if I'm the dear leader, 
And I'm seeing this move across the Middle East, authoritarian government after authoritarian government being challenged. You know, I'm going to have this reoccurring nightmare, and this is going to look a lot like Eastern and Central Europe a number of years ago. And if I'm the dear leader, I'm going to be thinking, boy, Ceausescu might be in my future, where a population rises up and they execute their authoritarian leader. And I, I think that that is an opportunity. I think we ought to think a lot about that. The Bush administration uh, set red lines. We drew a red line here, we drew a red line there, we drew a red line there. And North Korea would cross that red line. And we'd draw another one and they'd cross that, and we'd draw another one and they'd cross that. Uh, I'm very skeptical about drawing red lines. And whether it's a Republican or a Democratic administration, I don't think drawing red lines is the way, is the way to go. Uh, in terms of how do we sort of put pressure on North Korea, which is different from red lines, uh, I think we've got experience to draw on. Uh, I think that we need to be innovative, and we need to be creative, and we need to be regional, and we need to work with our closest partners. Uh, the application of financial measures by the Department of Treasury in the form of seizing or having Macau authorities uh, seize uh, financial assets of North Korea in Banco Delta Asia sent a profound signal to the North Korean regime. Now this was only 25, 27 million dollars. These were accounts that were directly associated with counterfeiting, with drug smuggling, and with proliferation. Uh, but what was the effect? Well the effect was to de deny North Korea the ability to use the international financial system because Banks didn't want to fool with North Korea. It was small change. If they thought that they were going to be subjected to very severe financial consequences in the international market because of the U.S. position. I think the South Korean government can do that. If they think about it, if they're innovative, if they're creative. Uh, the Japanese, I think, uh, have been innovative and creative in the financial area. And I think that matters a lot. I think working together in the proliferation security initiative. South Korea, after delay, after delay, after delay, uh, did join the proliferation security initiative. The sky didn't fall, like was predicted by many. Uh, and I think that's another opportunity. As long as we're committed, as long as we work together, we share intelligence, we share sort of operational advantages, I think there's a lot that we can do together. Uh, diplomacy. I think we can be much more ambitious in our diplomatic objectives with China, for example. What we need to do is think and work together to come up with a strategy for dealing with this complex set of issues. Because you've got to connect the dots, you've got to connect all the parts together, or the effect of the single actions uh, will, be, uh, uh, you know, will be very short lasting. Uh, to me, the number one, number one non-proliferation tool of the United States is maintaining a credible and reliable nuclear deterrent that our allies have confidence in. Because if our allies lose confidence, what, what does that mean? What, what does that mean for proliferation, not of our adversaries, but of our friends and allies, those who rely on our nuclear deterrent? And whatever uh, administration you find in the White House, 
it's going to, that administration is going to be supportive of prevention. We have to be. I mean, we've got to do everything that we can to prevent the access uh, to sensitive technologies and materials by uh, state actors and, uh, and, and non-state actors. That is an American interest. That is not a Republican interest or a Democratic interest. That's an American interest. And I think it's an international interest.